Oh, man cavers. What are we doing today? Well, we're going to have a look at our Moiford lathe. Now, it's roughly set up. Now, I haven't tried this yet. I did pull the motor to pieces. Do you remember that blew the trip? Well, my neighbour come around the other night and I said to him, John, that's blowing the trip. I said, bugger it, let's get it to pieces. I do wish I'd have recorded it. But with dear old John next door here, swearing and going ahead, I thought, can't. So anyhow, we had this damn motor to pieces, took all the end out, took all the armature thing out, and all bits and pieces, and I noticed the centrifugal switch, it was seized, and the contacts had got green fur on them. So I filed them up on a little bit of machine oil, so that switch moved backwards and forwards and I got the motor back together but this is God's honest truth I have not tried it because I didn't in case it blows the trip so we're going to have a look at the motor I've got it back on the lathe but I ain't got the belt on yet because I want to try it without a load and if it works we'll then put the belt on see if the lathe work mm. anyhow before we start on a serious note I see um, most of you have watched Mrs. Man Cave's video. Thank you so much for watching. Do you know, I didn't even know she had done that video. She snuck in here while I was at work. And I come home and she said, Adam, can you post a video on your channel? Because a lot of people were starting to ask. I mean, at the rally the weekend, several people, oh, Mrs. Man Cave's had a haircut. And I'd mentioned she was a bit poorly and people were asking questions. And Rachel was like, do you know, that would do me good to tell everyone. And yeah, so she's come out, told everyone. She was thinking, now this is probably not going to interest a lot of you guys, but I think she's done a lot of um, looking on YouTube herself for people who have um, gone through breast cancer and survived it. And she couldn't hardly find any videos in the UK of people that have gone through it. And she was like, you know, I think that would do me good to talk. And that would probably, it might help someone else. So I think she's going to do a little video diary of what's going on and how she's feeling, how she's coping, and basically what the procedure entails. Uh, it's Thursday today. She is got, has, is, has got more chemo tomorrow. I think that's half past one in the afternoon. I've got to take poor girl back up the hospital and she's got more chemotherapy. And um, we have just got back from the hospital. It's Thursday, so we're here today. We're there again tomorrow. She was there yesterday for more blood tests. So, um, yeah, she was thinking of doing a little, her own little video diary and posting it on the channel. I know a lot of you guys probably aren't going to be interested in a video on breast cancer. But if there are a couple of ladies out there who might find it interesting, let's hope someone finds them. Because I don't mind posting them up for her. Um, yeah, so she's getting plenty of support, you know, from me and you guys. Your comments have been overwhelming. And yeah, she will be all right. The consultant, when we went three weeks ago, and I didn't have to say a word. We sat there with the consultant. He had all the test results back and he was saying this and that. And I didn't have to say a word. He must have seen dread in my face or something because he just looked me square in the eye and he said, Adam, don't worry, we can, we can cure this one. You know, well, she'll be all right. And that's what I want to hear, guys. That's what I want to hear, you know. So she will be all right, you know. And it turns out, since she's, you know, found out she's had it and we've got talking, I mean, there's actually a couple of ladies at work who have had it over the years and now they're absolutely fine again. So, yeah, it can be sorted. Um, yeah, so there you go. Anyhow, well done, Rachel, and thank you for putting up with me. And we will get through this, don't worry. And, guys, um, she was saying I was going to make some channel changes. You're right. Um, I am, I shan't be announcing them yet, but instead of doing less videos, I'm hoping to do quite a few more. I will certainly keep posting because, to be honest with you, as I've said to Rachel, it's really weird, but 
when I'm behind this camera talking to you guys, it's my happy place. I don't think of nothing else like I'm talking to you guys now. When I'm playing with this lathe in a minute, I shan't be thinking that it's my happy place. It's it's where I zone out. It's my time and it's where I'm happy. You know, it's certainly not at work. I'm not happy. It's certainly not sitting idle. I just absolutely love doing videos for you guys. I don't do it for the money. I do it because I absolutely love it. I really do. And I'm quite passionate about some of the things I do working on this old crap. Um, if I ever hear it, if I ever seem excited, I genuinely am. You know, I don't, none of my videos are scripted. I don't rehearse them. I don't script them. I do very minimal editing. The only time I'll do any editing is if there's something what I think is going to flag up a copyright, like I'm doing a rally, a bit of music for argument's sake, that could demonetize that video. Or if there's something a bit monotonous where it takes me 10 minutes to undo one bolt because it's seized. You don't want to see that, so I might edit that little bit out. Cock-ups I leave in. Genuine first starts like this motor. It has never, I haven't tried it since it blew the trip in the house last time. I try and keep everything honest and genuine and no bullshit. You know, there's too many YouTubers out there that they get a job what takes them four hours and condense it down to a 14 minute video and say, this is it, making it look so easy. And they don't show you the battles. They don't show you the problems. They throw an older loop, new parts at an engine. Of course, it's going to run. Everything, you put all new points, new condenser in. You, you know, you put a new carb on it. Of course, it's going to run. What's left to go wrong? I genuinely work with what's there. Some people moan and say, oh, you should replace this, replace that. But the idea of the channel is, can you fix what's there? Can you get an old engine and get it going without putting any new parts on it? Maybe a new plug and, you know, cleaning out fuel tanks and that, but without sort of spending any cash on it, can you get it going? You know, that's the whole idea of the channel. Um, anyhow, I'm waffling. Um... Good luck, Mrs. Man K, for tomorrow. I will be with you. And for you guys now, sorry about the ramblings, but we're now going to have a look at this lathe. I've got a temporary set up before you all bitch and moan. Oh, that's not safe. It's not. No, it's not. It's it's lumbered up on a chest of drawers. It wobble arounds like a turd in a pea pot. I understand that, but I haven't got a heavy enough stand to put it on yet. I'm, con I'm actually looking at a metal lathe cabinet on marketplace but the guy's not returning my messages oh, i messaged him twice yesterday once today it's a lathe cabinet it's not very expensive and it's 10 miles up the road but a typical marketplace sort of seller some reply to you some you'll send them a message they never reply they don't even read it guys what is the point of advertising something if you're not going to reply to the messages what people send you anyway rant over we're getting on Ah, oh, how long has this waffling I've just done? Eight minutes. Who's going to listen to that? Well, guys, here is our my Ford. Now then, I don't know whether you guys can remember what this looked like. I will drop a picture in here. I cleaned it yesterday. I cleaned the lathe outside. I got it outside. It was a damn struggle because it's heavy. But at the time... Hang on, let me move these bits. That's it. But at the time, it didn't have a motor on. But it still cut washers off my ass trying to lift this damn thing on my own. But there you go. I give it a good clean with some heat and oil and a paintbrush. Cleaned her all up best I could. I've done a little bit of wire wool on the bed to clean the bed up a bit. But there's still chips coming out of this thing from the previous use. I can see chips, metal chips down in these little slides. And every, you know, every time I move this thing, there'd be a fresh batch of chips drop out of it. So I know absolutely nothing about lathes. I have never used one of these, although I'd really like to. I do see a lot of greasing points. I see a grease nipple here, another one here, 
Didn't I see some more up here? So, ah, there are two more up there. There's one on the tail stock there. I'll fill the oilers up. I have done that. They were all full of jelly and greasy stuff in the bottom where the oil had congealed. So I did take the greases, um, oilers to bits, wipe them out, put them back and refill them. So they're working and dripping as they should. So I wanted to make sure this thing was lubricated and the off chance that that motor works. Now you want to see my bodge job on the motor, don't you? Yep, yep, yep. Right, let me bring you down here. Right, you'll love my wiring here. I've got the capacitor hooked up with two crimps. I know there's a bit of exposed on there. This is just for testing. Before I go flicking metal chips, I will tape them up. But I don't want to tape them until we've tested this thing. So I've had the end bell off this damn thing. Um, cleaned up that centrifugal switch. I had to have the pulley off because the whole armature come out. But we got it off. She's back on. She's tightened up. So yeah. Oh, it's all, oh I ain't put the oil and bolts back in that motor. Look, there's an oil screw there and another one here. I forgot to put them in. Right, I think we need to drop a bit of oil down then. And get them screws back in. And then I'll plug this motor in and see if it actually works. Alright, let me squirt a little bit of oil in this back one. And then we can try this mo Whoa, crikey. There you go. She didn't take too much. There we go. Alright. There we are. Excellent. Where is my cloth? Alright, I think we're going to now just try this damn motor. Where's the plug for? Here it is, with my extremely dodgy wiring and broken wiring connection. I'm going to plug it into this extension lead. All right, the extension lead isn't turned on because there's no switch on this. So when I turn it on at the plug, we'll either trip the bang, trip the switch and it'll go bang or it'll work. So keep an eye on that motor. Let me walk up the other end of the shed and turn it on. There we go. Is it going to work, guys? Three, two, one. Yeah! Oh, crikey. She's been down nicely, look. Look at that. Well, that's a damn good move for the sound, of it. Down some time to wind down. I say when I had this to bits, there was all congealed grease all in the bearings. I had the front bearing out, the back bearing. I just heard that centrifugal switch click. All right, that. Let's try it again in case that was a fluke. There we go. There we go. And she's off again. Oh, I can't believe how nice that's spinning down, look. I heard that centrifugal switch click. So that's clicking as it should. Do you remember before when it went to start this lathe? It, um, yeah. It played up something chronic. It just, bang. Do you remember it like really slowly turned the lathe? Now then, have I just, have I fixed it, or was it knackered, and as soon as I put the lathe on, it's going to do exactly the same thing. I don't know. So I'm not counting any chickens, but it went with no load, so let's hope it'll go with a load. Now before we do any of this, I'm going to get the one-man grease gun out. And pump some grease into these nipples. I will wipe this excess. I think this grease gun, oh, it's getting them in. I think this grease gun has got a too big a head on it for them little nipples. <clears throat> Maybe I need to get a grease gun with a smaller nipple. Look at all that, all that stuff. For any metal chips to stick to so we'll wipe all that excess 
Oh, it's pushed the ball in, so I think that has done something. Yeah, I think that's got some in there. I like with this, our tiny little nipples, they probably, they probably won't take a lot. Now, I don't know whether you grease, grease this, what's this called? Lead screw. Ah, see, I've been watching Blondie Hacks. Of course, she did a little series of about 10 videos, Beginner's Beginner's Guide to Lathes. So I, I did sit last night and watch about seven of her Beginner's Guide to the Lathe. And she actually recommended that the, oh, what do you call them, carbon carbide bits. The carbide bits that go in these things, because I've got several of these, as you saw. These um, attachments here. What is wrong with the camera? It's not focused, and here we go. Yeah, these attachments here. She recommended that these carbide bits weren't so good for a home workshop because they're better at a really high speed application, a commercial application. So she suggested if you've got a sort of home workshop using high speed steel, because number one, it's cheaper. And number two, it's more forgiven for the beginner because apparently them little carbide things are easy to break. Anyhow, so I'm going to take her word for it. I'm going to put something in this lathe and see if I can do some metal turning. But for a start, where do I put the damn belt for? Here we go. For a start, I want to put the belt on. I so need to get a bench for this thing. Whoops. All right, our belt is on. I think this one tightened up. There you go. This lever up the back here tightens. Well, the motor's turning the chip. What all this, what's all this business here? Gears or something? Oh, well, that's... That's doing... That's the half nut down here, and I know that, because your carriage won't move now. No, with that up, it will. So we don't want that engaged, because if this do start, we don't want this thing spinning off on its own. Oh, you want me to accident in neutral. Right, I don't think that carriage has got to turn. No, nope, the half nut is off. I don't know what speed we're at or anything. Anyhow, enough waffling. We've done our greasing points along here. The oilers, we'll turn them on half a turn. Yep, we're getting drips. So, oh, let's see if this lathe will turn or is it going to blow the trip again? Or have you got happy man cave? Are you zoomed into the whole thing? I don't know. Yes, you are zoomed into the whole thing. Right, let's see if this silly lathe works. Ah! We are working. So, she's doing something. We have gears, we have things on the move. I do have the covers for this end. I did clean all them gears up with a little brass brush and some diesel and then thoroughly lubricated them. The white metal bearings in here are oiled. So, grease, grease pins are oiled. All right, what do this do? Oh, wow, so that's our What's this? Cross sliding compound end up. I'm going to get this all wrong. Compound cross slide tool post tile stock head chuck. Oh. Oh, she got a lovely smooth operation, guys. She really has got a nice smooth operation. That is really good. Now, someone said if you push this forward to slacken the belt, you can stop this chuck and then select your reverse. Ah, there you go, we're going backwards. And yes, I've seen the safety videos about no rings, no long hair, no baggy clothes. And I understand that if you get something in this, it'll, it'll rip your finger off. It ain't going to stop. 
I thoroughly appreciate that. I'm in the sort of neutral at the minute so the belt will just slip. So we're going to come into neutral here. Right, I think now I can do this bit by hand. Yes, I can. Excellent. Well, I'm going to turn this off and we're going to clean under this cross slide. Let me switch her off. Well, there you go. We actually work. I can't believe it. The my Ford works. All right, have I got a spanner? The appropriate size. I think I had one ready. There you go. Well, that's a bit sloppy, but it's on. Now, from what I've seen on the my Ford videos, you undo these right out and this thing lift off. So I want to clean all this swarf from under it. That's one right out. Now, is there a load of bits going to spring out on me? I haven't got a clue. What's going on? See, look at all this. Look at these chippets. See, there's chippets and little like half nut things, right? Oh, that's all oiled under there. Look. Tell you, I think somebody's looked after this, lathe. That's the impression I get. That is the impression I get that someone's looked after this thing. Because it's all free. And yes, I know it definitely needs bolting down properly. This is a very, very temporary. There you go, that's all that crud out of there. Look. Oh, I can see touches of brass in there and all. There we go. Well, that's got all the chippets from there. Right. Oh, I think we can wipe all this down. Put a little bit of oil. Do you, do you put oil on this edge? I'm assuming so. Let's wipe all this there. Make sure there's no swarf still under there. That actually looks quite good, actually. If I'm honest. What's in here? <coughs> oh. Well, I don't know. Let's wind this right back, see if there's anything in there. Or is this going to come right off now? Now I've done that. Oh. Oh, I've unscrewed this too far. Oh, there you go. She'd come off her thread. Here we go. I'm going to give these little slides under here. I'm going to give these little slides here just a little tickle of oil. I don't know whether you meant to, but in case the metal stick to it. But I always think when you've got metal to metal, you're better off with some lube. I think that thread actually is oiled, but we'll give that a drip and all. So I don't know if you want to flood these machines, but there you go. Oh, I think we'll do. All right, let's let's get this cross slide back on here. Compound, sorry. That obviously dropped in that centre piece. Yep. All right, let's get our bolts back in. If I can line the damn things up. Where are we? There we go, that one's back in. And then I'm going to put something in here. And you guys can tell me everything I'm doing wrong with metal turning because I have never done this in my life. This is typical. I have just watched YouTube tutorials. Now, for some reason, people seem to have these compounds at this angle. 
So I'm going to leave this compound at this angle. Tell you what I didn't do. I don't suppose it matters. But I didn't put any oil under that little bed bit under there, did I? That did have oil and I wiped it all off. Oh, that's all right. I can get the oil can under there, look. Come on, can. She's nearly out of oil. There you go. Oh, yeah, we've got... Oh, that's all coming out the edges now. Oh, yeah. We have definitely... Definitely got some oil under that. Oh, crikey, yeah. Oh, yes, we got oil under there. And on the little centre shaft and all that. There you go. Hehe. <laughs> all right. Cool, that turned nice and easy now. Oh, right, here we go. Take two, get our bolts back in. Wipe up this excess oil, I can see what's gone down here. So we've got greased up, the oilers are on. The lathe actually switches on. Now you're going to tell me everything I've done wrong and baffle me with technicality and terms that I basically aren't going to understand, but I will try. I will try and um, understand what you guys are saying. So I think we've got to bolt this thing down at here somewhere. Because everyone seems to have these at this sort of angle. So we'll go here. Now your tool post. I think you've got to hold. Well, this is pretty basic stuff. But I'm pretty sure you've got to... Um, have your, the cutting surface at the centre height of your bit of metal. Now, what am I going to use? I'm going to try an old bolt. Something that's not that important. So we're going to machine down, if we can, this rusty old bolt. I just got to... Cool. Yeah, we'll chuck him up and see if we can grind this head off, shall we? So. Well, he fits in there, all right. We'll stick him out that far. Where's the chuck? Right. Now, this is how organised man cave is. Here it is. This thing is unplugged, by the way. All right, we're in a three-jaw chuck. Now, I want this bit. I'm going to use this carb, this um, high-speed steel. That's too low. Now, I think somebody else said the easiest way to centre these is put a drill bit in your centre stock, in your tile stock, sorry, and get the cutting bit of that height. So let me see if I can get a drill in that tile stock. All right, we've got a drill in there. So let's bring this compound back. And we've got to get this bit in here. So the cutting height, I think. Can you see that? Or have I ever zoomed out too much? No, you can see. I think we've got to get this cutting height the same you know I think we've got to get this that's way too low look oh, uh. what's this if I put that under there there's a shim wow look at that that comes Pretty much bang on. Well, I think we've got to have a look at then. So I'm going to have an angle because they seem to cut on a corner. Whether this is going to work, I do not know. 
have I or, or just this knot on this tile stock on this tool post this is where you say you yeah, know that wrong I probably have I have no idea what I'm doing none whatsoever I I think the lathe is on the slowest speed yeah I think we're about in the middle there and we're going to be cutting I think on this first little edge so let me turn this lathe on tell you what I think I'm going to that's on the slowest speed it's got I think I'm going to move it onto the middle speed but I believe you need a little bit more speed for steel so we'll go on a medium speed there you go All right, let's turn this light on. I will be wearing the safety glasses. All right, we'll turn this light on and see if I can get anything at all to come off that or is it gonna snag up and bust? So let's get him on. There you go. Glasses are on. And this is where you say you're doing this all wrong. I'm going to put this in and I'm turning the little handle on the lead screw. Now I know you don't take much of a cut. I've never metal turned. Well, we're doing something, love. Back a little. Back. Let's go in a bit more. Oh! Oh, we're shaving some of that off. So we've got, a, yeah, you back off quarter a turn, then we'll go in half, so which means we're in another quarter a turn. Now, let's back off a little bit, come back. Let's try three quarters of a turn. Oh, yeah, oh, Christ, yeah, we're biting now. Back off a bit come back we'll go another quarter oh there we go you got to back off then go back in a quarter a turn at a time back off back in another quarter right that's taken her off back off a bit come back Go in a little bit more. Well, we're getting springs off it now. Back off. Am I taking too deep for cuts there? Because we're getting like springs. I'm not using the power feed, I'm doing this manually. Well, I certainly wearing the head on it, don't I? I'm quite impressed. I know that's no mere finish, I think, for a newbie, though, who's never done metal turning. And only watched some YouTube videos, I think we're doing all right. So what am I doing wrong here, guys? Anything? Or is, a, or is for a beginner this all right? Ah, oh, we're taking little cuts here. I take it to take a fine cut, like a thaw off, you just do a little turn. Hey, I'm doing a really light cut there, look. Let's go a bit more, we're going a bit deeper this time. We're nearly down to the shaft of the bolt now, I think. You can see the look on my face. I got my tongue out, so I know I'm concentrating. 
No, oh, that's it, love this. Look at that. Oh, oh, see, we're starting to turn the muggy bit of the bolt now. No, I mustn't go in too far. I've got to get away from that chuck. So I think we're going to start turning the whole bolt in a second. Can you cut on the back stroke, or is it only advisable to cut going forward? And I'm going a bit deeper now, hopefully get into that bolt. Ah, it's trimming that bolt up there nicely, look. Look at that. I'm sorry if this is a bit boring, but I am thoroughly enjoying myself. Oh, we're cutting a big old cut now. I'm surprised that's nudging that off. Look. Oh, we're cutting the bolt off now, but there we go. I say we're certainly getting a. There must be a wobble in that bolt because we're getting a dark spot. Now I'm not using power feed, I'm doing this on the little wine manual handle on the end. But I don't know whether I can cut on the back feed, I might try that in this round. Try cutting going backwards. Oh, that cuts going backwards, look. That seemed to be neater going backwards, to be honest. What I'm going to try and do now is I'm going to try and put a little bevel on there. Bevel that end up a little. So I'm putting the compound in a little. There you go. Coming in again. Well, hey, I am really impressed with how this thing works. I'm going to do a cut going backwards. We seem to get a better finish going backwards, and I got this bit set up wrong. chatter there. She did mention chatter and I can't remember what caused it. There you go, let's come back a bit. There you go, I think that's it. I'm very happy with my masterpiece. Now I'm sure some of you guys are going to be like, that's a total mess. But it appears I've done something. Let's turn this lathe off and take my piece of equipment out. And then I think we can be calling this video a day. Oh, she got a little bit warm. Well, we have turned the bolt from that to that. And there we go. What I'm going to do is, you don't want to see a total amateur try and learn how a metal turn. I've got a few more bolts. 
I'm going to have another play for half an hour. And then we'll finish this video. Ah. Well, guys. 30 minutes have passed. Let me take the safety glasses off. 30 minutes have passed. And in my back pocket, I have three extremely good specimens I am proud of. Which I've made out of old bolts. There's my old bolts. Now then, the first one I did was this one. You've seen this kitty. She got the dirty threads. Let me turn my, let me turn a light on. There we go. We have the old bolt. Then I got a little bit more technical. Well, that one, look, that's got a fine thread on it. I don't know what I'm doing wrong there. Maybe the bit was in the wrong place. Then I decided to take half a head off and come up with this contraption. All using that one bit where I've cut some grooves in, nothing that end. I've cut some grooves in, I've half grown that. This is actually a lot better finish. It isn't mirrored, but it's, well, in my opinion, quite a nice finish. Haven't tried the facing off yet, but I've done that. And then I thought I'd be really technical and try and make myself a punch. So I made a double-ended thing. Look at this bad boy. There, haven't I gone technical with this? I'll put some rum cuts in this end. Look, we've got some cuts there. And if I turn it round, we've got even more cuts like a comb. I know it's terrible, but when you bear in mind that this is my first ever go at metal turning, I'm quite happy with my masterpieces I've created here. Look, I am masters of all creation. There we are. Sorry, that camera keep flicking about. It's changing from lens to lens. But there you go. That is what I've managed to do on my first ever turn on the metal lathe. Using some old rusty bolts, I've made these contraptions. There we are. There we go. So guys, yep, this is what we've made on our lathe. First time using it. We've made some chips. I've had a couple of little sweeps up and got stuff in my dustbin and brush. But yeah, we've made them three bits. Let me know how I got on. That's a long bit. Look at the continuous length of this damn bit. Oh, there you go. Was I cutting too deep, too fine? You want it in thou, don't you? Oh, I don't know. I assume each one of these is a thou. So I'm going to say, where's the naught on this thing? 20. 10 naught. Oh, there's a naught. Look, right. So I'm assuming there to there. No, that's a 30. Oh, there's naught. Right, naught is there. So I assume this 10 means 10 thou. 20 thou, well that's gone 70 there, look, what is that go, 10, 20, 30, 70, 80, no that's got to be wrong, oh, I don't know, I'm assuming each one of them, is, each one of them little knoblets is a thou, oh no, I just wind it in and out, anyhow, yeah, that's working, we're doing something, oh you didn't see a thing I was doing then did you, I was looking at these numbers on this wheel down here, yeah, I was looking at these numbers here on this wheel. That looked like... Yeah, there's a naught there. Oh, I was going backwards. There's 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70. Right on with you. So there's the naught. So if you want to do 20 degree, if you want to do a 20 thou cut, you just go to 20. 10 thou go to 10. Oh, I'm with you. I get it. All right, okay. I think I got the hang of that till you tell me that's all wrong. Right, there we are. Oh, my Ford. Well, she seems to be working. So, guys, that's it for our lathe video. She's had a clean, she all works, which is good. I'll have to fix these guards' head to go back on the end where some numpty snapped them all off. 
but it is working and I am over the moon and I've just remembered the cardinal sin never leave your chuck key in your chuck get into a habit of putting it in your pocket or in my case tucking it in my t-shirt so it falls out that's going to be an ass pocket find there we go she's in the back pocket anyhow habit 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 never leave your chuck key in marvellous right i'm going to go and we will see you next time thank you very much for watching bye bye for now ah <sighs> why did i go ha ha when we need to zoom in ha ha My Ford!